Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to talk about splitting retention time MOVD pairs. This is a common data structure in LCMS experimentation where we have two variables stored as a single column. And so the before the underscore, we have retention time. And then after the underscore, we have mass of charge. This could be analogous to other cases where you have two variables stored as a single column. And so if you want to see how I generate this data set, look here in the first cell, but I'll continue forward. So the first thing we should do is look at the data type. And you can see that the D types of this RTMZ column is object data type. And so that lets us know that we can apply string methods to perform this splitting technique. We can simply then just call this column RTMZ. And then from here, you can see, again, we have this object data type. There are 200 variables. And so let's begin splitting. The first thing you want to do is use the string accessor using str and then we can use the split method and tell this method to split on the underscore and this is where we have our retention time stored on the left side and the master charge stored on the right side when we run this we get a list for each element where again the left is retention time and the right is master charge but we have an, a secondary argument that we can pass in called expand we run when we run expand and set this equal to true you see that we generate two new columns where the left column is now retention time and the right column is mass to charge or m over z we know how to rename those columns so we can just use the rename method and just chain that use the columns argument and then pass in a dictionary where we set zero equal to retention time and we set one equal to M over Z, and now I want to merge these two columns back to that original data frame. We can also chain that method as well. And so we run the dot merge method and merge our right data frame, which is DF. And then we'll just say left index equals true and right index equals true. And this is the case because both of these data frames come from the same original data frame, so we know the indices match. If we run this, you see that we have our data frame now where the M over Z and retention time have been split and we have our original intensity column. Of course, when we're chaining methods, we can wrap this whole thing and then just allow us to improve the visibility by splitting the methods onto new lines. The last thing we wanna do is now drop our RT MZ column and we just pass in the column equal and now we have our cleaned up data frame and let's just call this clean DF and then call it at the end of the cell so we can render it and you see now we have a data frame that is much easier to plot but let's take one more look at it so I showed you earlier that the D types of the original data frame the RTMZ column was an object data type Let's take a clean DF and look at the same method. And you see that our RTMZ column remains as the object data type. And so these are still considered string values, even though they look numeric. So the last thing we can do is update clean DF equals clean DF dot as type. And let's just say float. This is one way to update that argument. And now if we look at clean types, you see that the entire set is now a floating data type. We could go back and specify and make M over Z integers, we keep the intensity values of integers, but this is just one way to ensure that we have the right data type for this data frame. And so here now we have a cleaned up data set that we can proceed to do other analyses. In the next few videos, I'll continue to show you how we can work on processing this sort of data, particularly when it comes to visualizing complex data sets, as you might see in Raman spectroscopy, mass spectrometry, and other types of analytical techniques. If you want to be notified when the video comes out, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.